Good morning and very glad you could join us. This is Of The Press where we'll bring you the major headlines from the National Dailies. I am Benny Ark. With me in the studio this morning to analyze major headlines is a political analyst, Honorable Moses Nakbe. Good morning to you, Honorable. Good morning, my brother. And thank you for joining us this morning. Nice seeing you. All right, let's get into the headlines this morning. The news making the headlines. We kick it off with the This Day newspaper. National Assembly passes 2020 budget, increases estimates by 264 billion naira. And they've come and said that they will study the differential, says the presidency and analysts upbeat on implementation. Eight discos now no fate of license on Saturday. That's in page eight of this day newspaper. After 12 years legal battle, Kalu backs 12 years imprisonment for fraud, for fits assets to federal government. 19 other former governors await fate and Serap CDHR cop hail conviction. Seven killed, scores injured in another Lagos pipeline fire. NNPC blames vandals for blast. And Agbakuba writes Buhari proposes cooperative federalism. This and more making the headlines in the This Day newspaper. Honorable, which would you want us to kick it off with this morning? Um, seems to be a breaking headline across all the days this morning. The sentencing of Kalu. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, fortunately, I'm from Abia State. Okay. And... Um, over the years, you know, Abia State has been, to me, the most backward state in the southeast and the south south. It's it's a it's a good news that uh, we are having this conviction, and um, but I'm not completely impressed with the EFCC. Okay, reason being that um, what is happening to the bullion van man? What is happening to him? Is this selective justice? Is it because, in as much as he has done wrong, but I, I want to see there is this tribal sentiment in this judgment. What is happening to the bullion van man? What is happening to Danjuge Koje? What is happening to those people? Mm. So, so this, is, this is a good judgment, yes. but what, what is stopping the EFCC from investigating and trying Bola Ahmed Tunumbo? For bringing in two bullion vans that the whole world we have evidence that he, he brought in two bullion vans into his house during the last general election what see the efcc the and the presidency um shouldn't think they have scored a, a political point by this judgment what they need to do is that they need to let nigerians know that this fight against corruption is serious by trying to number and um, the rest that needs to be tried. Well, justice delayed is not justice denied. I mean, in this case, it could be denied. Justice for delayed Carlo, is justice he's, denied. he's not the first governor to be convicted and jailed. He, yeah. he makes it the fifth governor that has been convicted mm. and jailed for um, diversion of funds while they were and in office. And Tinubu is an ex-governor, yes. you know, and he also brought in two bullion vans. So I want to bring it into perspective. I yes. know why I'm saying this. Because you cannot fight the war of corruption selectively. You said you needed a petition. Somebody has given you a petition. Yes. So what is the problem? Why can't you start an investigation and trial of um, Bola Metro? It's, it's a good conviction because it's in my state, because there's nothing happening in Abia State. Abia yes. State is like a dead zone. So I'm so happy, and Abians are happy about this judgment, but the EFCC needs to do more. All right. Now, let's talk about the, the, the 2020 budget, the increased estimate by 264 billion naira. Now, they say they will study the differentials, and the president has come out and said they will study the differentials. Any reaction to this? Yes. yes. My reaction is that, you know, we, 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 we have had experts tell, tell us that the, you know, the, the Senate, the benchmark is 200, 2.18 million barrels per day. And also, the original, the, the presidency puts the, the oil um, benchmark at $55, but the Senate increases to $57. So what I expected to do based on the projections of the fall of oil revenue for 2020, you know, experts have predicted that oil revenue is going to drop. I, I don't understand the rationale why the Senate should go and hijack yeah. or increase, rather, this benchmark to 57. On what rationale? What I expected them to do is to have a conservative budget, reduce the benchmark, and then look for other sources of how to fund this budget. Yeah. Because it's not a realistic budget. Based on if okay, this two hundred and um, something billion naira. Billion now, yes. How do they intend to fund it? 
That's what you should ask. All right, quickly, we're going to the Punch newspaper this morning. The headlines to the Punch. FIRS says online purchase tax may begin January, and that's in page 34 in the Punch newspaper. 7.1 billion now fraud makes reactions as court jails Kalu 12 years, and that's in page 10 in the Punch. Debt servicing takes 2.7 trillion naira as National Assembly passes 10.6 trillion naira budget in page 32 in the Point newspaper. Buhari meets Oshomale, state chairman, intervene in the door. President begins move to avoid APC disintegration after tenure. And that's in page 2 of the Point newspaper. Church members bought in Lagos pipeline explosion. Sacked local government bosses vowed to resist all your caretaker chairman. Family friends more 28 year old lady stabbed by robbers. And Ekiti Varsity sacked 600 workers over illegal appointments and others. And that's the much in the punch newspaper this morning. Now, some, some, some days ago, some weeks ago, there was, there was an uproar um, within the, um, the, the, the APC. Um, Oshomale, people asking for his recognition immediately, mm -hmm. and Buari meets with Oshomale, the state chairman, to intervene um, in a dose situation. How do you see this panning out at the end of the day? And it's a time bomb waiting to explode. The APC is a time bomb waiting to explode. Why would you say that? <laughs> the, all, the, all the trappings, it has all the trappings of a time bomb that needs to explode, because you can see that the reason why they are still together is because of uh, the figure, Buhari. And he knows and is beginning to sense it that on his leaving the office, there, will be, there could be a disintegration based on the high-handedness of um, um, the party chairman on yes. how he has been running the affairs of yes. the party. So I think uh, it's a good move for APC, but I don't think it's going to help them because I see, I see there's going to be a lot of dissenting voices okay. towards um, the next um, general election. There's been, ex there's been concerns expressed about our debt, our debt uh, portfolio. Okay. Amazingly, in the budget, the 2020 budget that was passed, mm. um, the debt servicing takes about 2.7 trillion naira mm. um, as the National Assembly passes this budget. I need, I need your thoughts on this. 2.7 trillion about, naira. That's about, um, that's close to 30% of, of the our debt to GDP ratio. Yes. You see, it shows you that, and if you look at the money uh, earmarked for capital project, it's, it's almost, or if not equal, 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 to, yes, equal to, to, to the amount we use in servicing our that's, debt. So it, it shows you that it is time for us to, to look inwards. It's time for us to, to begin to look for, for, for opening the economy. It's time for us to look for ways of stopping fuel subsidy. Fuel subsidy is eating so much chunk of the Nigerian um, uh, 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 revenue. Yeah. So we need, the federal government needs to look for an urgent means to end fuel subsidy. They need to open up the economy. They have to stop the differentials in exchange rate. So that is one of the ways they can also open up the economy for the government to begin to earn more revenue. It is not a good signal. It is not a good signal. And we want to borrow another, another about $30 billion. Well, once we do that, it's going to head up to our, debt to, our debt to GDP ratio is going to head to about 30%. And that is not going to be very good um, for us in the short, in the medium and in the long, long term. Long term. Yeah. And we take a look at the nation, the headlines in the nation newspaper this morning. Lawmakers raise budget 2020 by 260 billion naira, fastest since 1999. They say in the news, you can find that in page eight in the nation newspaper. And also, Shoare regains freedom after court order, judge to get report. Lagos okays 250 million naira for research, innovation gets boost. Aisha Buhari, president's aides not defending government. Um, that's, in, that's in page five in the Nation newspaper this morning. Carlo gets 12 years for corruption. George, it's crime against humanity. And all the National Daily seem to have that story this morning. And two bonds in Lagos pipeline fire. Obasanjo orders mourn as Titi Ajanaku dies. And Beko Kuti's wife dies at 78. And those are the headlines in the nation's newspaper this morning. Shuri finally regains freedom after over 100 and something days of detention, even after the court gave the order for their release. Um, that was flagrantly flouted. Let me have your reaction to this. Human rights, now my property. 
Animal can't dash me, <laughs> human rights. You understand me? So we yes. shouldn't be celebrating when somebody wants to dash you your property. You understand? Yes. That's why I had to sing this uh, fella song. It's yes. very apt for the moment. So we, it's not, it doesn't call for celebration. It, 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 it calls for a, a sober reflection of the Department of State Services. How can you flout, court others with such disdain and disregard? Mm. And now you are fringe over here and you want us to clap for you? It is his fundamental human right and they can't dash it to him. You understand what yes. I'm saying? So that's why I sang that song. So right now, the ESCC should bow, I mean, the, the DSS should bow their head in shame and Showere is the winner and Nigerians are the winner. So it's, it goes forward further to let us know that we need to begin to ask questions about the institutions that we have in this country. And that's how the man are judiciary in any ways. It has. Yeah. It has. It, is, it has rendered the judiciary to a barking dog that has no, that has no tooth. It's a toothless bulldog. The judiciary in Nigeria just talks and the presidency does whatever he likes and the DSS does whatever he likes and the ESS does whatever he likes. So it is, it, it has cast so much aspersions on the integrity of the judiciary. So the judiciary needs to wake up mm. and send a strong signal to the executive and to institutions that they cannot undermine its power. If not, they will just become... They are, sorry to say, this is my opinion, they are almost useless. And if something is not done, they will become utterly useless. And we'll go to Vanguard newspaper this morning. Obasanjo's XA TT Ajanaku dies at 73. Border drill boosts for rice production, self-sufficiency, says the federal government. Page 15 in the Vanguard newspaper. NNPC pipeline explosion, one dead, scores injured in Lagos. And that's in page 10 in the Vanguard newspaper. DSS releases Shoere and Bakari. Ex-Abia Governor Senator Oji Kalu jailed 12 years for money laundering and exosacks 600 illegally recruited workers. Senator IGP hot extortion reduced checkpoints on highways, penalized government diverting education funds, Atiku tells the National Assembly. And Senate adds 264 billion Naira passes 10.594 trillion Naira budget 2020. Um, and at the back side of the, of, of the bank of this morning is sports. Size matters. Anthony Joshua reveals why his weight could be key to beating Andy Rios Jr. And that's a fight that matter, but is looking forward to this weekend. And emulate Muhammad Ali in Rios' remarks. Foreman advises Joshua. Now, let's, let's put on a few things this morning in the Vanguard newspaper. Border drill boost for rice production, self-sufficiency. There's been so much emphasis about the closure of the border and a few analysts who have come with on of the press this and this week have expressed their opinion that the closure of the border is not the panacea to our problem. Do you have a contrary opinion to the view? No, no, I don't. Yeah. I subscribe to the assertions. Yes. Because um, um, you see, if you are producing your own rice and then it's of standard and you are selling your own rice for like say 10,000 10, naira, and the foreign rice is selling for like say 15 or 20,000 naira. Yes. And your local rice is good. For goodness sake, I will not see a good rice for 10,000 naira, and I will go and be eating a foreign rice for 15 or 20,000 naira. So, what we need to look at is is how to boost our local production, how to increase and the quality of our local rice production, and then at affordable costs. You see, even in the US, the government is, even in US and other developed countries, the government is paying subsidy, huge subsidies to farmers to reduce, to produce and to reduce the cost of their produce. So I see no reason why if the federal government really wants to encourage um, rice production, they can also do the same. Let our local rice be up to standard okay. and let the price be cost effective. Nigerians, you don't need to close the border. The foreign rice will be looking at us and will be eating our local rice. Mm. So that's not an excuse. We need to do what is right. All right. That's an interesting one. Right? I've mm. said it to the Inspector General of Police. Hot extortion reduced checkpoints on our highways. Do you think the reduction of checkpoints on our highways will reduce <laughs> extortion of our many uniform um, with uh. motorists, vehicular people? <laughs> is that a solution? I mean... <laughs> to the taking out checkpoints on our highways because it's, that's in itself curbs a, a great amount of criminality, in my own opinion. Well, the checkpoints in the first place are not 
to my own opinion, they are not designed to look out for criminals. They are designed to look out for the, uh, the pockets of the officers that man those checkpoints. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, whether they hold checkpoints or they don't hold checkpoints, I think we need a, 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 a reorientation of the Nigerian police, of, the, of our security agencies. See, this bribery and corruption and extortion has become like a culture in the country. You understand me? Yes. And they need the police has to do a fundamental job in re, in in rebuilding the infrastructure of the minds of the Nigerian police um, um, force members. So whether you reduce it in their station, they are still doing it. You understand me? Every opportunity an average policeman has is to extort the complainants or those people that have been. Um, that has case against them. So whether you reduce the checkpoint or not, these are just symptomatic uh, measures. We need to deal with the root cause. It is a cultural problem. It is it is a an institutional problem. And until we begin to make sure that people are used as scapegoats, we begin to make sure that there are punitive actions taken against officers that aid. We will not have um, a very, very lasting solution. Thank you very much, Honorable. And this is the much we can take this morning on Off the Press. And this is where we're going to wrap it up. Join us again next week, Monday, by 8.30 a.m. Have a great day.